Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for your patience. Um, for those of you in, in the United Kingdom, I hope you're coping with the hot weather and you're enjoying the weather. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. I'm Simon Tiberi, and uh, together with me on this call is Dominic Zena, and we're the two co-leads of the postgraduate TB certificate here at Queen Mary University of London. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly give you a presentation on um, the course, and then I'll open that up for your questions. And um, we're here to pick up any questions myself and Dominic. Uh, all right. Um, David, please, if you could put up the, uh, the slides. Um, as David's doing that, just a, a big hello from me as well. Um, hi, Dominic Zena, one of the, uh, the other co-lead. Um, and great, uh, uh, thanks for joining. And I hope you get out of it. Don't hesitate to ask. Sorry, Simon, over to you again. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. So, so we're both doctors. And we have slightly different backgrounds. I'm an infectious diseases doctor by training. And uh, Dominic, Dominic, you can present yourself later. Um, so um, I've got a passion for tuberculosis. I've been working uh, in TB clinics in uh, a reference laboratory, a uh, reference hospital in Italy, then in the UK, here in East London, at um, Newham Hospital and Bart's Health. Um, and I've been teaching on this course for some time. Um, and Dominic, please, if you can present yourself and what you do. Hi, I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist. Um, and with a passion and an interest in uh, TB, um, also in migration health, as it happens. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm one of the co-leads and I'm very excited about this. Um, so I'm coming, so you between um, uh, even the two of us, but uh, uh, you've got a little bit of a breadth of different, um, of different uh, things that we're presenting. All right, so next slide, please, David. So just very briefly to who doesn't know Queen Mary University. Uh, the course sits within the Blizzard Institute, which is the, the lower picture on the right. Uh, and that's the building, the new building. And the picture above is the laboratories. And this is a biomedical research facility. Um, so it has 400 members of staff, 120 academic faculty. And one of the strong points of Queen Mary University is medicine. So it has the oldest medical school in the country and it's considered one of the most prestigious medical schools in the country. Um, next slide, please. So tuberculosis, YTB, I think you need to push another button, uh, David, uh, maybe. Excellent, super. So about tuberculosis, TB unfortunately still exists and uh, it's still a big problem, uh, if not so much in the United Kingdom and in uh, developed countries. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very big problem in a, a lot of poor countries uh, around the world. So TB unfortunately infects more than a fourth of humanity. And uh, it's expected that 10% of these people will develop TB at some point in their lifetime. Um, this is still a problem. So despite we have effective treatment, the treatment takes six months. Um, it's not always guaranteed that there are great outcomes. And um, with treatment and, and with survival, we're seeing a whole set of new problems. So we're seeing that 3% of all cancers worldwide are associated with tuberculosis. Um, we're seeing that TB, um, until the advent of COVID, was the, the top infectious diseases killer and the largest killer of people living with HIV. Uh, COVID has now surpassed that. Unfortunately, it's caused further problems for TB and TB services. There's been an increase in uh, TB deaths and we're detecting fewer cases. So a big, big problem. And we're very far from eliminating this disease. Hence the reason for a course and hence the reason for a new generation of TB doctors, uh, nurses and, and, and healthcare workers that can make a difference to really eliminate this disease once and for all. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be quite a task. Um, we have a further challenge, which is that a third of antimicrobial resistance deaths is, is actually caused from multidrug resistant TB. So um, AMR is a big, big problem. Um, and a big part of that is tuberculosis itself. Uh, the UK government has commissioned some uh, surveys and, and studies. 
And one study uh, goes so far to suggest that at the current pace of events with um, the drug-resistant TB cases, we're seeing about half a million cases a year, and we're only able to treat only a third of these cases, that um, potentially up to 75 million people will die in the next 35 years from, from drug-resistant TB. So big, big problem, big threat to global health, public health in any country. Yeah, so it's it's a big problem close to home, away from home. Uh, we know that there, there are no borders for infectious diseases. Um, next slide, please. So why the PG cert? So um, one of the things we noted uh, was that there was there was no real certificate course or, or degree course in TB. Um, it's generally taught either in uh, respiratory medicine as uh, as a couple of lectures or within infectious diseases as a couple of lectures, but no one really has a module, more than a module, we, and there are no courses in TB. Uh, and that's unlike HIV, for example, where you have a diploma for HIV and so forth. And so if we really want to up the game and, and make a difference in, in, in TB, we also need to educate uh, the, the future generations. We, we need to set a standard, uh, an educational standard also to do this. Um, and so therefore we've launched this course. It's, a, it's an online distance learning course. The idea is that colleagues um, working in TB's field or, or, or colleagues who are interested in, in TB um, who, who want to embark on a career to, uh, to work on tuberculosis have the opportunity to get excellent teaching from a number of international experts in the field and have the possibility of, of, of a true training, um, which is not unidirectional. And, and there's the possibility to, to ask questions, interact, and, and also collaborate as well uh, with groups of like-minded individuals who are passionate in TB. So uh, this is a part-time distance uh, learning concept. So it's flexible. The idea is that everybody's getting on with their lives, um, having a job, family, other commitments. And the idea is that um, we can go to the next slide, please. The idea is that um, you have two semesters of teaching. Um, next slide, please. And you have, um, so this is the structure for, um, this, this is the program is 60 credits. So these 60 credits are university degree credits. And so this can make up uh, a diploma or potentially MSc because these are university credits and it's uh, the, the postgraduate certificate is also post-nominal as well. So it's a real university degree which, which gives certification, which can be built up towards other academic qualifications. Uh, the entry requirement is a medical degree or a degree in a biomedical pharmaceutical public health subject, uh, a nursing degree and two years of experience working within TB or five years working experience um, without a, a nursing degree. So um, there are four consecutive modules split in two semesters and each one of these modules is six weeks each uh, in duration. Um, there's an introduction to tuberculosis, uh, bringing in um, global health uh, and bringing in epidemiology and, and some of the clinical aspects of TB. Um, the second module builds up on this and really we review together the risk factors and the risk groups for tuberculosis and the problems. And the third module is, is based on multi-drug resistant TB. So the impact of resistant TB, how we manage that and on what the threats and, and, and where the concerns and challenges are. And the fourth module is on public health in tuberculosis. And um, in this particular module, um, next slide please, um, there is the possibility of doing uh, a small amount of um, dissertation work. So this is a complete distance learning course and there's no need to come to see us at Queen Mary, but if you do, we can arrange for that, but it's really a distance learning course and it's on Queen Mary Plus, which is a system which works pretty well. Um, the lectures um, which we would send to you on, the, on, this, um, on this platform are around 18 to 20 hours per module. And that's about three to six lectures a week and generally more around four uh, lectures a week. 
uh, we have our own textbook, uh, which we would we will provide to you as well with chapters which are part of these lectures as well with, with a lot of the content. So that also helps. And we have a repository of publications uh, as well. There's also a weekly online tutorial. And uh, if you can make the time, um, that's great because it's live. The lecturers will be present uh, together with myself and Dominic, and we'll be able to discuss the lectures and the content. And if you have any questions to the lecturers, then that gives you the option, the, the possibility to interact with them. And if you can't make it for whatever reason, uh, that's not a problem. We, we record them and you can still send us emails or, or requests. Um, and we can talk about the, the different aspects of the lecture in, 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 if, if needed. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this is just an example of um, the, the webinars. And um, each week there's a webinar. Um, we held them on, on Wednesday uh, afternoons. Uh, but um, you've got a, a number of people, um, a number of lecturers present, and a number of lectures that have been discussed. And, and the idea is it's a deep dive session into the different aspects of, of the lectures with the lecturers present. And because the lecturers are there, we can also discuss amongst ourselves and we, we can develop some very rich discussions together around the aspects of the particular lectures. Um, next slide, please. Mentorship. So this is one of the um, areas which we focus on to really try to bridge the gap um, with virtual learning space. So we're trying to make it as interactive as possible, as useful as possible for you. So the idea is that this is a really prof professionalizing um, course. And, and therefore, the idea is that you get the most out of this. And, and we will, as, as possible, obviously, try and help you um, get what you need from, from this course. Um, next slide, please. Assessments, there are two assessments at the end of uh, each semester, and so that's January and May. Uh, and these are online tests, um, as you can see here in the small window uh, with, with uh, multiple choice questions. And there are some selection of short answered questions. And then for the fourth module, public health module, that's a written assignment uh, for public health. Uh, next slide, please. And I'm open to any further questions. Um, and please fire away. If for whatever reason you can't ask the questions now, um, please email us. Um, both Dominic and myself have, uh, have access to that email and we'll be able to, to see your emails. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon, for uh, this. This is uh, fantastic. We have a first question here, which is, uh, would you accept a nurse uh, with less than two years experience in TB if um, there was supporting evidence from consulting consultant leading team? So um, would we? We would need to discuss that with the university because um, currently that would not be possible with the um, with the current criteria. So that would need a chairman's action. So um, we're mo more than happy to, um, to take your case and, and discuss it. But um, ultimately the, the, the chair, um, the chair of the, uh, the Blizzard Institute has the last say. So um, that, that's how it would work. So yes, let, we can try that. And, uh, and let me clarify, Carla, um, there is um, uh, either five years of nursing experience or a uh, professional experience um, and a nursing degree or two years of TB um, uh, nursing experience. So if you've got either of that, that you'll be fine. Um, um, but uh, if you don't, then um, don't be discouraged because we have uh, in the past um, on merit um, have made exemptions. Or exceptions, but that is not our approval, it's chair's approval, as Sam says. Uh, thank you very much um, for answering my question. I have got more than five years' experience, I didn't realize it was one or the other. So, totally, yeah, you've answered the question. Yeah, thank fine. you so much. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. It's worth clarifying always. Uh, so, we've got yeah. quite a few more. So, uh, oh god, they're coming in thick and fast. So, let's uh, so, um, how much is the course? Um, and when is the closing date for applications? Okay, the course is uh, three grand, um, and that's a flat fee. And we are happy about that because it sounds uh, so 
A, it sounds a lot, but actually this is a university degree. So it's, it's, that's to be said. The second thing to say is that uh, we're happy it's a flat fee because normally what happens in the UK, as you know, is that um, uh, overseas students uh, pay a lot more. And so, um, and so we are in negotiation about this, uh, but um, uh, the 3,000 is for the, for the time being what we can offer. Um, then, um, oh yes, uh, when is the closing date for applications? I think Becky is on the call, I don't know. September. Um, September. Becky. Yeah, I was just typing a message. It'll be the end of September, beginning of October, distance learning, we have a bit more wiggle room. So um, end of September, beginning of October. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, and next one. Um, Sorry, I was late for joining. Um, how do we apply? So you apply via the central application system um, in uh, Queen Mary, right? There is, um, so if you go, I think there's a link on the website, it's on our website. There's well. a link on the chat now, they, they, David's just put it in there. So okay, you, brilliant. Okay, so that that's in there. And you follow it there and there's documents, it's pretty straightforward. There's documents you require and all the rest of it and then uh, somebody um, at the back end. Um, by the way, um, uh, um, admissions are trying to be as fast as possible but they're not always because this is the time of the year um, so please bear with us if you had some delays I know I don't know whether that applies to you but I think some people are still in limbo that doesn't mean anything it means that basically they're overwhelmed with work at the moment so um, that's that's what it is um, uh, when was the last date for application? Well, I said that already. How much opportunity would be to explore PhD opportunities within the departments while studying on the course? Ali, Alva, is it Alva? Um, great, uh, great question. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, yes, um, obviously you learn or you get to know um, some people that may be willing to take on uh, a capable PhD student such as myself, for example. Um, so, so, so this is, uh, of course, um, uh, you, will, you will get to know these people um, and then uh, we can discuss this and, and explore and see what needs to be. Uh, uh, absolutely, that there's over 60 um, university lecturers and, and professors from all over the world. So from a, a lot of very prestigious centers um, and, and you have the possibility to connect with them, see their lectures and, uh, and interact with them in the webinars. So it should hopefully assist, facilitate. Um, but obviously with the PhD opportunities, there's, there's other discussions around that, but most definitely. Um, another question is the webinars. They don't necessarily need to be on a Wednesday. They can be on any working day and um, it, we generally tend to switch them around sometimes to allow for everyone to have the possibility to, to join in a live webinar. But uh, as I said, they're always recorded and uh, it's a democracy so we can see uh, what works for, for most of the people in, in the course. Um, Full-time registrar, uh, absolutely. So we, we've had uh, registrars in infectious diseases, microbiology, um, so it's very well suited. Uh, we've also had respiratory um, um, trainees as well. So it, it, it is well suited for you, absolutely. Um, Hannah, um, okay, yes. We'll, we will try and badger the applications team and see if, if we can get an answer to you as soon as possible. Um, Hannah, um, have you, um, sorry uh, to cut in Simon, have you actually uh, um, submitted? Because I believe, I'm not sure they action uh, half um, uh, completed ap applications. So I think you need to make sure that your application is finished in order for it to... Yeah, I have I have completed it. Um, just, yeah, I managed to complete it, but there's something I just need to upload, which I can do now. But um, okay. it, 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 did, it was finalized, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. In which case, thank yes, you. Becky, thanks for uh, chasing up. That's great. Um, um, if admissions aren't restricted, no. Uh, but we don't what happens is if we have more students then we get more resources so we get um, we get more teaching fellows and again uh, we have a very large faculty so um, we can give that mentorship and attention to to have whoever wants to do the course so um, do not have concerns that there'll be too many people and you I, I, I don't know that what, whether you had concerns or not on that, but no, there's no restriction. 
Great. So that's all the ones that I have on the chat. Uh, but you are equally um, welcome to unmute yourself because we're a reasonably small meeting at the moment. I see 18 uh, participants here. Um, so uh, so and and just um, and just uh, pose your question if you have. Um, I, I applied the year before the pandemic and I got turned down, <laughs> so I'm a bit worried, but um, I no, no, was never quite sure why I got turned down, but um, um, anyway, I'm trying again, so I, I, if I get turned down again, would it be possible to find out why? <laughs> Absolutely. I wasn't aware you were turned down, but um, sorry about that, but uh, okay. if you wish, if you email me and... Um, I'll try and see what we can do about it. Um, we'll see exactly, you know, for, for the entry criteria and, we'll, and we can ask the admissions office um, the reason why last time. Um, um, I'm just thinking we did put the course on hold. So um, it may have been for that reason. I can I can double check for you. But we did put the course did. on hold for two years. We had a gap because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, oh no! I, the... Yeah, I think I was genuinely turned down. It was before COVID. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. okay, I'll have to look into that for you. Yeah. Thank you. Just to just to put uh, people into the picture. So basically, this uh, course was suspended during the COVID pandemic. Um, so this is um, this is also why. Um, obviously, it was started just a year. I think it was the year yeah. before the COVID pandemic, and then. Yes. And then uh, it was suspended for two years because of COVID. And so we're now actually regaining that. Um, there is an interesting uh, question we might want to um, address, um, Simon. Um, um, uh, the, um, the, you know, the, the reason that, uh, is it Raj? Shall I say Raj? Um, was concerned about the number of admissions was uh, because um, if any delay happens from my side, uh, if I, uh, that I lose the opportunity because lim limited number of um, admissions. Okay, let me be clear. So the fact uh, you, you don't lose uh, that, uh, although um, for planning purposes and everything else, please do apply um, as soon as you can. Um, and so uh, uh, it would be much appreciated. The course will run. So should have no concerns that it doesn't run this time. Obviously, you know, COVID permitting, but um, I think we're living with COVID now, so it, it shouldn't be a problem, touch wood. So there was a, there's a question. Um, uh, oh, study leave. Okay. You won't need study leave. Um, so that, that, that won't be, study leave generally won't be necessary. So generally the webinar is done just after the working day. Um, we could also do it before the working day, um, but um, th there should be no need for study leave. Um, you may need study leave for the exams, so that, that's that's when you would need examinations, and you have plenty of time. Uh, we'll provide you um, at least two months of notice before um, the examinations, so you can take study leave for the examination days, and those are two days. Uh, but other than that, um, you wouldn't need to study study leave unless you want to study um, before on the run up to the examinations um, but that's up to you um, who to email uh, in case uh, this is about um, admission criteria again as well um, so different things so you can uh, email Simon or me or you can use actually ideally this um, gen generic email um, yes. yeah exactly which is coming there thank, thank you Becky thank you. you're reading my mind that is the best email to uh, to, then we have it in one administrative box and we can look at that. Um, and the other thing is that, of course, uh, it may be, checking, checking it quite carefully, it may be uh, worth um, um, uh, just applying and seeing what happens because we're, we're you know, if, if you apply and admissions then will probably flag it up and say, this person doesn't uh, fulfill um, and then, um, and then they, they may, um, they may uh, email us as well. Well, in any case, it's it's more it's safer than to to uh, to email the the uh, PG tuberculosis email. <laughs> We're working on that. That was a, a that was a response to you, Raj. Um, the scholarship op option. We're working hard on that. I know. We know three grand is a lot of money. 
sometimes some NHS trusts are willing to um, to, to foot the bill. So um, previous students have managed sometimes to uh, get their NHS trust or the, uh, the Royal College to, to pay um, part of the fees through their bursary. So for example, for trainees, you may be able to have some of uh, the money via the deanery if you're a, a medical trainee uh, registrar and um, some nurses have managed to have the whole 3,000 paid by the trust where they worked so um, there are sometimes ways around that. Yeah in the, in the trust actually that that uh, that um, because you do have um, I don't know I mean back in the day when I trained um, we had study leave money and we uh, we could use it. I don't know what's the situation there. I suspect it varies quite a bit. But um, but it varies uh, from region to region, <laughs> trust to trust. But um, sometimes you can be lucky. Um, it only happens if you ask for it, though. That's uh, that's the thing. And, yeah. yeah. So the um, examination. Um, so. What applies is um, uh, there's the university system which is well thought out and well um, and there's a policy on extenuating circumstances. So things like um, you've been ill, you've been uh, ill with COVID or whatever, um, then uh, you, you uh, obviously um, uh, you can delay the examination dates, but you need to make a case. Um, and there are, um, there are the normal rules and regulations from the university apply. I don't know. I hope that I didn't leave. Um, I didn't. Um, ah, he, Simon is back. There you are. <laughs> I'm going to have to say goodbye uh, because I've been called away. But um, uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, communicate with all of you. And if anyone's got any emails, any requests, uh, please feel free to, to email that address, and, and I'll reply quickly. And, and I can stay uh, a little bit longer as well. So, um, so that's see you soon. great. Thanks, great Dominic. To Great to have you, Sam. All right, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. So I'll stay around for a little bit longer. So um, if people have any questions. Or if you're more comfortable, you can unmute, unmute yourself. Okay, so um, if not, then it's my pleasure to uh, conclude it. Um, um, it was great to have you um, uh, at the call, and uh, don't hesitate. Uh, don't don't hesitate to uh, send us um, send us um, uh, some questions, some more questions, and um, that's good. Thanks, Marianne. Looking forward to <laughs> to your uh, application then. Um, and um, and uh, it was great to uh, to e meet you. Uh, yeah. As, as one does these days, and um, and I um, I hope to see many on you on, on the course. Ah, somebody has a camera on, so that's great. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> all right, okay. So uh, I say goodbye for now. All right, all the best. Bye for now. <laughs>